If I create a video because of your comment, I'll give you a shout out. So be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. So there are a few reasons why you might want to tin a wire. You want the flexibility of a stranded wire, but you want the sturdiness of a solid core wire so that you can press it into a breadboard. Another reason might be to protect it from oxidation so that you can connect it to things later. And another reason is so that you can protect the strands so that you don't lose them over time. The first thing I wanted to cover briefly is that when you're preparing to tin a wire, you want to strip the end off for the length that you need. Usually I, I do maybe a quarter inch to a half an inch, uh, depending on the purpose of my tinning. This is a 22 gauge, so I'm going to clamp it down, and then rather than actually twisting it while it's clamped down, I'm going to twist it 90 degrees and then clamp it down again. And then I'm going to pull it off with my fingernails. And the reason I do that is because if you clamp down and then you try to score it, you could actually end up cutting or scoring these strands of wires and doing that is actually going to be counterproductive to your goal. So in this case I have about a quarter of an inch, a little more um, cut off at the end and it's ready to add some solder to to get some tinning. Alright so when you're soldering the end of a wire, some things you want to watch out for is you don't want to apply the soldering iron for too long. It's going to end up melting the insulation uh, right here and that's not good. You don't want to have your soldering iron too hot. Usually I have mine around 650 to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. When you tin the wire, you're applying a thin coating of solder throughout the entire wire so that it creates almost a solid core wire, but still gives you the flexibility of having a stranded wire. You can use flux for a situation like this. However, I would venture to say that most people don't have flux, so I'm going to show you doing it without it. What you want to do is you want to put a little bit of solder onto the tip of your soldering iron here, and that's going to create a nice um, heat transfer to the wire itself. So then you put the wire or the uh, soldering iron underneath the wire, and then slowly apply solder to the top. Once the wire gets hot enough, it'll melt the solder, and you'll see it start to flow in. Okay, it was very fast, but now you can see I have just a very thin layer of solder on here. You can still you can still see the strands, which is what you want. Okay, you don't want to put so much on there that it just looks like a glob of goo. Um, it's still okay, but it's not going to go into your breadboard very easily, and that's technically, you know bordering on unacceptable soldering skills. So also what you want to do is you want to make sure that you get the solder to go all the way up to the uh, the insulation here. Otherwise when you go to push it into the breadboard you'll kind of get like a mishmash. It'll try to bend and, and split right here and it won't go into the bread the breadboard very well. So now that I've tinned my wire I'll show you. I just have this breadboard laying around. Um, here for an example, this is 22 gauge. All right, so if you try to put a stranded wire in there, you know, it goes in, but over time, you know, you're going to start to bend these. These are going to get bent. They're going to get twisted. You're going to smash them up again. You're going to try to mash them in there, and then they're not going to go in. It's just going to become a big mess. So after tinning it, this goes in there nice. And it's it's really in there because it's it's got that coating of solder, so it's made a little thicker. So now it goes in very nicely. Um, if you do have trouble getting it into the breadboard, then you can use a pair of pliers or um, tweezers, and you can kind of press it in because um, because of the fact that it's flexible back here, it can be hard to push it in. You need to get very close to the tip so that it's able to be going into the breadboard. One more reason why you might want to tin the end of a wire is so that you can create a nice hook so that you can solder this to something like, say, um, a DC motor. They have the tabs that have a little hole in them. Sometimes you might want to create a little J hook like this. So I'm taking a pair of needle nose pliers and then I'm just bending the wire around it. So it creates a little J hook. And now I can hook this into a, a DC motor 
and I can solder it and it gives it a much nicer connection. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe.